Hi, I'm Gareth from Big Game Bikes. Today I wanted to talk about brake rotors. Let's talk about why you should get a bigger rotor and what the benefits are of putting a bigger rotor on your bicycle. So this is your brake rotor and it's one of the most important parts of your bicycle's brake system. The reason being your brake pads make contact with the brake rotor and as it spins the brake rotor gets hot. So the bigger the brake rotor the more time the brake rotor has to cool down before it makes contact with the brake pads again. So if you live in a really hilly area or if you carry quite a large payload on your bicycle um, then consider getting a bigger brake rotor because the cooler your brake rotor remains the less chance there is of something called brake fade and that's where your brake pads and your brake rotor get so critically hot that their ability to brake begins to fade. Let's get this fitted onto this bike so you can see how easy it is. The first thing you need to do when you're installing your rotors is you need to identify the type of mount that you have on your bicycle. Okay, this is called a post mount and this is called an IS mount, an international standard mount. And the reason that's important is because when you increase the size of your rotor, you need to get a, an adapter to allow your caliper to move further out. This, for example, is a post to post 203 millimeter rotor adapter. So this is a post mount that is already designed to take a 180 millimeter rotor. But because we want to fit a 203 millimeter rotor, we're gonna pop this adapter on. And that means that when we put the caliper over here, it's gonna keep the caliper far enough away so that it fits the rotor. If your bicycle has an international standard, an IS mount like this, then you'll need an adapter like this. So this attaches onto the bicycle like that and just like with the post mount to post mount it's going to keep your caliper far enough away to handle the larger brake rotor. So the customer of this big game bikes Impala lives down in Cornwall, super hilly area, they're using their brakes an awful lot so we're going to go from 160 millimeter rotor on this, we're going to fit that 203 millimeter rotor, we've got our adapter, this is an international standard, an IS mount so we know which type of adapter we need. Let's go ahead, let's take the wheel off, let's take the caliper off, and let's fit the rotor. So as you can see, a 203 millimeter rotor is substantially bigger. And that means when my customer is braking, this larger 203 millimeter rotor is going to have a lot more time to cool down. Very important to note, don't touch the rotor with your fingers. Any kind of grease or oil or contamination ends up on that and you're going to get squeaky noisy brakes. So be very careful when you're holding the rotor not to touch the parts that are going to be, make contact with the brake pads. Okay, so now when we put our rotor on, make sure that the little arrows are pointing in the right direction. You don't want to put the brake rotor on the wrong way. So just make sure that you're putting the rotor on facing the correct direction. Your brake rotor will come with some new screws. It's important to use those. There's a tiny bit of blue thread lock on them and that's going to help keep the rotor in place. When you're putting the bolts in, put them in opposite each other like this so that the brake rotor is torsioned onto the brake mount evenly. If you go in order, there's the risk that it won't sit nicely. At this stage, you don't need to do these up tight. Once we've gone round and we've tightened them all so that they're finger tight, we'll get a torque wrench and we'll tighten these to six Newton meters. Let's get our torque wrench. So let's get our torque wrench to six Newton meters. That is the torque specification for this bicycle. Double check with your manufacturer and let's go ahead and torque these. Great. Okay, brake rotors on. We've torqued that nicely. Let's remove the brake caliper from this wheel. 
Then we're gonna put the wheel back on because then it makes it easier for the bike to stay standing. So we've got our new brake adapter and this one is international standard IS to post mount. Brake caliper is going to go here and bolts are going to go through there. Same place as where the old one was. Note this really helpfully says up. If you attach it the wrong way, brake caliper is not going to fit. Now you don't have to do these bolts up really tight. Once you feel it bite, just give it another little turn, that's it. If you want to be really precise, have a look at what your manufacturer recommends for the torque settings for those. Normally five or six Newton meters is perfect for those bolts. Let's take the brake caliper. And what we want to do now is we need to put the caliper onto the rotor, but we need to make sure that this part of the rotor, the top of the rotor here, doesn't touch the top of the brake caliper and that's where some of the spaces that we have might come in handy. If you look inside there, the brake pads are really handy there, they're yellow and obviously the brake rotor is silver. What you need to do is you need to adjust where the brake caliper sits so that it's just right. And if we look here, we can now see that there's a bit of a space and there's a bit of a space at the bottom. So we're gonna add some spaces to make sure that the brake pads are sitting beautifully on the brake rotor. I've got two spaces here. I'm gonna try them in the top and the bottom for now. Check the alignment, add spaces, remove spaces. And once I'm happy that the alignment is spot on, and I'll show you what the alignment should look like when it's spot on, and then you'll know how many spaces you need. Go ahead and tighten these bolts to the point where they're just off of tight and there's still some play in the rotor. Now let's check to see our alignment. So if we give the wheel a little turn like this, you can see that the top of the rotor is pretty much on the same level as the two yellow brake pads. Let's go ahead and tighten these bolts. Now pull and hold your front caliper and let's go down to the caliper and tighten that. Keep holding this brake lever. So now we're holding the brake lever and that means that the brake pads are going to grab onto the brake rotor and that's gonna help us align and we're ready to tighten these bolts. Done. So as you can see down there, the brake pads are nicely aligned with the brake rotor and when we lift the wheel and we give it a spin brilliant that's it we're done caliper is on new brake adapter lovely big rotor it's an easy job follow exactly the same process for doing the rear wheel and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the bike for a quick spin just to make sure everything's perfect and what you want to look at is right now the brake rotor is a beautiful silver color when I come back from my test ride, we're going to see a nice mark where the brake pads have made contact with the brake rotor. And if our alignment is perfect, we'll see a nice gray strip around the brake rotor. That was a successful test ride. Much, much more braking power. The brake rotor feels a lot cooler than it would have done with the 160 mil rotor. And if you can see, our pad alignment is absolutely spot on. I'm delighted with this. Super fast, super easy upgrade. And if you've already got hydraulic brakes or you want to improve your braking, this is 100% the way to go. Get a bigger rotor. I really hope you liked this video. Drop a comment below if I left something out or if you wanna know something else. And more importantly, let me know what other sorts of videos you want me to make and uh, we can get those done. Thanks for watching.